Peter Dutton, welcome to the program. And I should point out, you are joining us from home quarantine. All uh, Queensland-based members of parliament are still in home quarantine uh, under the rules uh, set for your visit to Canberra a week ago. But thanks for joining us. This is a renovator's delight uh, where I am at home at the moment, uh, David. So it, it, we're here until Thursday and back out uh, into the real world then. All right, looks very rustic indeed. Uh, let's start on this issue we've been discussing. Uh, can you now confirm that four Chinese journalists were indeed questioned by ASIO back in June? Well, David, uh, as has been reported, there has been ASIO activity, uh, as you'd expect. I'm not going to comment in relation to that, but uh, where ASIO has sufficient grounds for the execution of a search warrant uh, or for activities otherwise, then they'll undertake that activity. And uh, there's been a concerted effort with the Australian Federal Police working in concert with DFAT and other government agencies uh, to make sure that we can address foreign interference uh, wherever it might occur in our country. And if people are masquerading as journalists or as business leaders or whoever they might be, uh, and there's evidence that they are acting in, uh, in, in a contrary nature to the Australian law, then uh, ASIO and the Australian Federal Police and other agencies will act. Can I just ask why there's a reluctance, though, to uh, confirm that this happened? Because uh, you know, clearly, with Shaket Mosselmain being raided, I mean, the cameras were tipped off. There was a lot of publicity around it. The Prime Minister even spoke about it in, uh, in his press conference and so on. He called it an extremely serious situation. Why was that so public that this one, there's, there's a lot more caution? Well, David, as you'd appreciate, uh, there are matters that are under investigation at the moment, uh, the operations that are still in play. Uh, obviously, ASIO and the Federal Police will be talking to a number of people, and I don't want to jeopardise any of that. Uh, their operation should continue, and they have our country's best interests at heart, and they'll continue to make sure, uh, as I say, where foreign interference uh, is being exerted by any individual, uh, they'll take action in that case. All right, well, if we assume then that this is right, that the, the, the Chinese journalists were indeed uh, raided, do you agree that that did create a greater risk for Australian journalists in China? No, I don't. And, and as you said before, uh, there's no evidence of that. And uh, some people try to draw an equivalence between the action of the federal police here or the ASIO, uh, other agencies here in Australia to... Uh, to what might have happened um, elsewhere is... I, I just don't think it's a fair comparison. We well, it, operate okay, by the not, not comparing law, what the two security agencies for... do. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, not comparing the two security agencies, just saying, just asking, uh, does the fact that they were called in and questioned or, or, or visited at home and questioned um, put the Australian journalists at greater risk? Because we know China earlier this year, there's been this tit-for-tat with American journalists and Chinese journalists. This is what Beijing does. Well, as you say, there are examples where other countries have uh, experienced the same thing as what has taken place here against Australian journalists, and it's been ongoing. We've seen uh, activities in Hong Kong, obviously, that cause journalists uh, great distress, and in our country, we want to encourage a free media. Uh, we have people from all over the world who are posted here as journalists uh, reporting back into the home markets or filing for the domestic market here. Um, that's completely appropriate. and. Uh, no, but what, what I'm asking that. is, but if, where if, people are, if, if this did uh, create a greater the risk of being a journalist, then that's a different story. Okay, but if this creates no, I don't, a greater no, risk, I don't don't accept that at all. Okay, so you don't think there should have been more done to uh, uh, warn the Australians, Bill Bertels, Mike Smith, and even Chung Lei, that they could be the target of Chinese security forces? I think if you look at uh, the actions of DFAT in relation to this matter, uh, it's really textbook uh, diplomacy and I think great credit to Maurice Payne and to DFAT for the way in which they uh, conducted themselves, that they provided advice when it was available. Uh, ultimately, the was true Chung test Lei was given did any people warning? get back safely. They did. Well, I'm not going to comment in relation to Chung Lei. We want to work very closely with uh, the Chinese in relation to that matter and, and we'll continue to do that. But in relation to the two individuals, uh, They've got back to Australia safely. That is a good thing, and it's as a result of DFAT's work. Uh, and I think there should, frankly, only be uh, bouquets for their actions. Can I ask, the US has put a cap on how many Chinese uh, state-run media journalists are allowed in the US, and they now have to uh, seek renewal of their visas, I think, every three months. What's your view of Chinese journalists in Australia? Should they face tougher rules than, than others? Well, we, we, we have a look at what uh, the United States is doing, but we operate by our own system and our own norms. 
uh, and we won't be uh, influenced otherwise. If people are here as journalists uh, and they're reporting uh, fairly on the news, then that's fine. But if they're here uh, providing a slanted view to uh, a particular community, then we have concern with that. If there's attempts at uh, interfering or conducting uh, espionage type activities, then we have a problem with that. Uh, but for a journalist coming into our country, applying scrutiny as anybody on your panel would today, we don't have an issue, obviously, with that at all. Uh, we want to abide by the rule of law. We do, and we want others to do exactly the same. And, and we're not going to soft pedal, uh, ignore that people are breaking the law or that they're uh, interfering with our democracy or our system of government or stealing intellectual property. Uh, we're, we're not going to allow that activity to take place, and the Prime Minister has been very clear about that. What can you tell us about uh, this report in the News Corp uh, papers today? Annika Smith is reporting that an apartment block home to Chinese embassy staff was raided back in May. Can you confirm that? Well, David, I, the only advice that I've got is that uh, it's not related to these matters at all. Uh, from the advice that I've got this morning, uh, the Australian Federal happen. Police obviously conduct the day-to-day the -day the day-to-day -day community policing in the ACT, it was related either to a drug matter or uh, to to another okay. uh, domestic matter. So, it, it, it has, it, as I understand it, it bears right. no connection to this issue at all. Okay, but just before we leave China, give us a sense. I mean, we can see what's happening in the public arena. You're obviously privy to a lot more than, than, than we are. How would you characterise the relationship with China right now? We have an incredibly important relationship. We want it to continue, but we want... Uh, there to be a mutual respect. We want there to be an adherence to, to the rule of law. Uh, we want to make sure uh, that the two-way trade continues. We want to make sure uh, that people who are in our country abide by the law uh, in, in the same way that an ABC journalist or a News Corp or a Fairfax journalist uh, would conduct themselves uh, if they were in China. So uh, that, that's the position of the Australian government. It's long-standing and uh, we have systems that are in place here, both in terms of our democracy uh, the way in which the law operates, and we, we're not proposing to deviate from that. Let me turn to Borders. You've been highly critical of the Queensland Government uh, for not allowing a young woman from Canberra out of quarantine, hotel quarantine, to attend her father's funeral. And there's another case in the paper today of someone unable to cross the border for their son's funeral. Should close family members be given exemptions to attend funerals? Is that your position? Well, particularly where they're coming from, uh, an area where there, there have been zero cases. So in northern New South Wales or the ACT, for example, uh, they've got fewer cases than in Queensland. So uh, I, I've been critical because the borders are closed between New South Wales and Queensland and, New, and the ACT in Queensland, not for health reasons, not on health advice, but for political reasons. The Premier's coming up to an election at the end of October and it's the indiscriminate way in which these laws are being applied as well, where you've got one rule for one person uh, and a knockback for the next. And I think that's what uh, has got the Premier into a lot of trouble. And if this was one isolated case, then that would be bad enough. But many of us have been dealing with multiple cases in our own constituencies. And to see per people hurt in that way, uh, it is, it's very difficult to well, watch. Indeed, it's not isolated, but your criticism does seem to be targeted at Anastasia Palaszczuk, the Labor Premier in Queensland. What about the Liberal Premiers in other states that have also- Well, I, I come from Queensland. OK, so, I, I, I know you do, but I'm just wondering, what about Liberal premiers in states who've also stopped people attending funerals? I'm, I'm equally critical. I, my, I've, I've been very clear uh, about my view. There's a justification for the border to be closed between New South Wales and Victoria. I hope that it can open again soon, but there's no justification for borders to be closed in Queensland at the moment. And uh, if the same arrangements are in WA, where there's a Labor administration, South Australia or... Tasmania, where there are Liberal administrations, then uh, that, that's my view. Others that are closer to it and in those particular states can make comments about their own jurisdictions. But that, that's been my strong view, speaking to people who are hurting and the decisions of the Premier at the moment, where uh, these young families uh, and, and older relatives will never get these moments back. And there's no justification on health grounds for it. This is not health related. In actual fact, it's creating more mental health issues in the community uh, than already exist. And there are enough already in relation to people being locked down and the way in which uh, they've had to change their lives, they've lost their jobs, they've lost their businesses. And I don't want to see their problems compounded. And at the moment, that's 
exactly what Premier Palaszczuk is doing. All right, well, you talk about the mental health impact this has. What about the international border restrictions uh, for which you're responsible? And, you know, I'm sure you're aware many Australians have been pleading with your department to be allowed either to come into Australia or to leave Australia so that they can either see a dying loved one or attend a funeral. Uh, what do you say about that? Well, there are scores of cases uh, where we've been able to uh, intervene. The Border Commissioner, the Border Force Commission has made a decision to allow people in in those circumstances. Plenty uh, of cases is, where, where that uh, hasn't happened, and oranges, If you're talking about... So but, but a, a couple of things. Uh, the a number of people that we can bring in uh, through the international ports at the moment is a function of, say, for example, the Queensland Government or Queensland Health's direction that people that all hop off a plane from Los Angeles have to go into a hotel for two weeks. Uh, at, the same, at the same time, they've got a cap on the number of places that they're making available at those hotels for quarantine. So uh, we're, we're working to those restrictions. I would be happy to double the number of people tomorrow if Queensland Health was to relax the, uh, the quarantine period of 14 days, if that's what the health advice what, provides. What about people leaving if not, Australia? Then they need to increase the number of hotel rooms available. What about people... Well, they've got to come back, David. So we've been very clear. Yeah, but that's up to them. And they, they well, would have they, to apply to, to come, come back, back and so wear, wear that cost and all of that. But if they want to leave, why can't they leave to go to their, their uh, funeral of a loved one? Well, these, but these are the people that you're... These are the people you're talking about in the first category. So we've provided advice to Australians not to travel overseas uh, from as far back as uh, you know, January, February of this year. Uh, we've been very clear about uh, the fact that we closed our borders because of the COVID threat. And we've allowed people uh, to travel uh, to see a loved one overseas. We've allowed people to travel for Well, I, I, can, I can read you a list of names of people who've missed, missed funerals or, or missed seeing a dying loved one. Uh, Astrid uh, Maganau, her father in Germany. Uh, Chris Simpson had to wait two weeks to, for approval to fly to the UK, had to delay his mum's funeral. I mean, why can't they leave? It's up to them about coming back and, and paying for that and waiting for a flight and all that. But why can't they go and see a dying loved one or attend a funeral? But, well, you're arguing against yourself here. The first question was in relation to people who are stuck overseas who can't get back. They can't get back at the moment because they've travelled uh, after the Australian government's advised them not to. Now, in circumstances uh, like you've just detailed, many people have travelled, uh, but they're stuck because they can't get a hotel room in Queensland or uh, in Victoria when they return. So it's a function of the state health directive that people need to go into hotel quarantine for two weeks but then putting a cap on the number of beds that are available so why then in those was, quarantine why, hotels. Why then was Tony uh, Abbott so, given an exemption to leave and, and go to Europe? Well, because, as I say, business people uh, we've looked at uh, and the Border Force Commissioner has looked at the individual circumstances uh, around individual cases and has made decisions uh, to approve or to not approve. And there are literally But surely people uh, who want to go to a funeral or, or see a dying loved one deserve as much compassion as a business person or Tony Abbott? Well, it, again, it depends on the circumstances. In many cases, we have provided that approval. But your question is about whether somebody could go now and expect to get back uh, into Brisbane Airport, International Airport, uh, in a week's time or a month's time. The reality is that they can't at the moment because the Queensland Government has put a cap on the number of beds. Uh, so we'll look at the individual circumstances and there are many, many cases where we've allowed people to go. But, All right, but you're comfortable with Tony Abbott New being South allowed Wales to go? Or from but Canberra. You're happy with Tony Abbott being able to go? Well, it, but not someone who needs to go to the funeral of their yeah, parents? Yes, I am on... on well, again, again, David, you can look at the facts in relation to the individual cases where... That's what I'm uh, asking. We've got somebody coming from the ACT. We've got somebody coming from the ACT or from Northern New South Wales where there are no COVID cases. Now, I'm asking what Germany you're responsible for here States, with the respect, Minister, and that's uh, the international Europe, border, and that's whether it's OK for Tony Abbott to go to Europe but not someone to go to the funeral of their parent. Well, on, on the facts of uh, Mr Abbott's case, uh, the Border Force Commissioner approved that case, and in many cases where people have wanted to go for funerals, uh, they've also been approved as well. If, you, if you're talking about those, somebody, or trying to, to put an equivalence to somebody coming from, a, a, from Canberra or from... Uh, from northern New South Wales, where there have been no cases to come across a state border, uh, then, uh, frankly, there's just no comparison. That is different. To make I, I'm, no, I'm just asking about the international border. Well, let, let me finish then with... Of course it is. It's, it's chalk and cheese. OK, but I'm just saying there's a different standard applied to Tony Abbott as opposed to, to others. But let me ask you about Tom Hanks. You've, of course, been raising his case a number of times uh, this week, uh, the fact that he was allowed yeah. into Queensland. The Queensland government says you haven't been entirely honest about this. It was your department 
who gave him and his, um, what is it, family, crew, cast, 11 or 12 of them, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the all clear to come into Australia. Is that right? Uh, based on the letter of support from Queensland Health uh, and based on the fact that Queensland Government had, as I understand it, provided financial incentive for that movie to be shot uh, in Queensland. So uh, Border Force uh, will only approve uh, Mr Hanks if he's coming in under that arrangement. If Mr Hanks was coming here as a tourist, uh, he wouldn't be approved by Border Force. So uh, under the health direction given by the AHPPC uh, and by the Chief Health Officer in Queensland, uh, if Border Force is provided with that, uh, the basis for exemption, uh, then that exemption's provided. So, so but again, you've got all these uh, stranded Aussies Stephen in vulnerable here, situations trying to get back kicked, home. Kicked a massive own goal. No, but again, you've got all these stranded Aussies in vulnerable yes, but, situations but David, trying to get back in. Why does Border Force give Tom Hanks the all clear? Because though he was provided a letter of support from Queensland Health and the Queensland Government, who said that they wanted the film to be shot here because it created local jobs. Yeah, but your, your department could still say, uh, no, there are vulnerable Australians who aren't movie stars who need to be allowed in. But th these people haven't gone... I mean, the other point to make is that uh, Mr Hanks and his party have, have not gone into uh, hotel quarantine as, uh, uh, as other Australians would have to. The Queensland Government made separate arrangements for that. Hmm. Um, but but here, here, here's the point, David. The point is that Mr Hanks should be treated no differently uh, than somebody else coming back and that's, that's the basis uh, on which we argue here. Somebody coming from EACT where there have been no cases having to go into a hotel in Brisbane for two weeks before they can see a loved one who has a life expectancy of only one week uh, is, is an outrage and, and there's no comparison to make there whatsoever. Uh, we want to see jobs uh, created, we want to see industry grow. Uh, we've provided support for the arts industry and for many others. Uh, and the Queensland Government has provided letters of support for other people as well, uh, including Mr Hanks. Mr Hanks wouldn't have been approved by Border Force without the letter of support from Stephen Miles and from the Queensland Government. That's, that's very clear. All right. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton will have to leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, David.